A lot of you have been asking for some combinatorics interview style problems. So here is one. If you're planning to do the Oxford or Cambridge maths interview, I definitely recommend you have a go at this one. If you don't know who I am, by the way, I, I'm Jamin. Hello. <laughs> I studied maths at the University of Oxford and now I help students all across the globe who are looking to do the same, getting into these top universities to study maths. Let's have a look at this problem. We want to know in how many ways can we order the letters A, B, C, D, E, F so that the letters A, B and C are not adjacent to one another. As I say, do pause the video, have a go at this problem yourself. I'm going to dive into a solution. And in particular, I'm going to be explaining this as if this problem was given to me in an interview. So pay close attention to the way that I explain things and make it clear my thought process, because that's what the interview is about. OK, I'm going to go into student mode. OK, so this is an interesting looking problem. I guess we have kind of six slots, two, three, four, five, six, and we're placing the six letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, in these six slots, and we want A, B, and C to not be adjacent to one another. So an idea that I've had is maybe first, if we call A, B, and C, let's say bad letters, and D, E, and F, good, so these are bad letters, and D, E, F, good letters, the good letters are nice because they can kind of slot in anywhere. So I'm going to focus on the bad letters. I guess where could they go? So I think what might be useful first is if I consider the pos possible positioning of the bad letters and then I can worry about swapping them around. So for example, if I had A here, B here and C here, I could of course permute those three letters A, B and C, but I'll worry about that later. So what I'm thinking is if I label these one, two, three, four, five, six, I want to consider the kind of positions where the bad letters could go. So what I just showed there, one, three, five, that's a possibility. And there's going to be quite a few more. So I just want to be careful that I don't miss any when I count these. And ah, I guess this is quite nice. I know that, for example, in this pair of numbers, uh, of letters, sorry, there can only be at most one bad number. Because if they were both bad, well, then you have two bad letters that are adjacent to one another. Similarly, in this guy, we must have at most one bad number. And similarly, in this guy, we must have at most one bad number. Uh, I keep saying bad number. I mean bad letter. However, of course, we are supposed to have three bad letters in total. And so therefore, we need exactly one in each of these kind of three bubbles, if you like. And so that actually only gives me two to the power of three different possibilities to check of triples because I have two choices for my low number one or two two choices for my middle number three or four and two choices for my large number five or six as to where these bad letters go so one possibility is one three five I guess if I keep going with one for the time being I could have one I could choose three and six that works for positioning my bad letters in terms of those are the only ones with one and three i guess i can look at one and four next now if i pick four i'm not allowed to pick five because those two would be next to each other so i'd have to pick six there so i could have one four six and those are the only ways that i could have one as part of my bad numbers uh, bad letters so maybe i consider two ah well if i have two as one of my bad letters well, I can't use three, so I have to use four. And nicely, if I use four, I can't use five, so I have to use six, like so. So these are the f only four different ways that I could pl uh, kind of place my bad letters. Oh, let me just get rid of this. So let me just pick on one of these to help me illustrate my next point. One, four, six. So we've got these guys here. Now, in terms of how I could place the ABC, the bad letters, there's exactly three factorial ways in which I can place those down because I could have ABC, ACB, or any other permutation of the three letters. And there's three factorial total permutations. And so let's say I end up going with BAC, for example. Then I'm left with three remaining spots, two, three, and five, in which I need to place the letters DEF. And because they're good letters, they're nice and easy, no stress about where those go. I can place them however I want. And again, there's three factorial permutations of those. So for each of these kind of boxes, I have three factorial times three factorial 
arrangement of these six letters, the three bad and the three good. And so therefore, in total, my answer is going to be three factorial times three factorial times one, two, three, four. And so I know that three factorial is six. So I've got six times six times four. And so six times four is 24 times another six. That's going to be uh, 144 if I've done that correctly. So there are 144 different ways to arrange these six letters so that A, B and C are not adjacent to one another. And then seen there. Cool. Hopefully you saw and picked up on a couple of things. In fact, I'm deliberately not going to mention some of the things that I did do and equally didn't do. I want you to leave it in the comments because I want us to help one another. What did I do in this in this interview that you think I did well and that would have given me some good marks in the interview at books? And equally, criticize me. You know, we can all we always have room for improvement. If there was something that I did that you think you, I could have improved on to earn me more marks in the interview, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll also provide some clarity. If there's something where you're not sure why I did something a certain way, why I explained something, or why it's useful to explain certain, something in a certain way, let me know in the comments and I'll help clarify and hopefully this gives you an idea as to how you should be responding when you're answering interview questions i'll leave a video on screen in which i solve another interview style problem i'll catch you over there